it's Wednesday the 3rd of May and today it's Big White's first birthday. He was hatched here in this kitchen a year ago and I can remember the excitement of, <laughs> of watching him hatch and, uh, and somewhere I've got a video of it and uh, I'll, I'll put a link to that in the, in the section below. This morning I'm heading out into the garden to plant some kale and some cabbage under the uh, hooped netted system that I've got to keep cabbage white butterflies off our brassicas. So that's all ready now for me to get the plants in there. So it's really windy out there today. I'm not going to be able to talk very much while I'm outside, um, but I will show you what I'm doing. Hooray, the wind has died down a little bit so I can show you what I've been doing. So I found the extra hoop that needed to go in there. Uh, I'll pop that in and then I've put some cane supports along the top so I strapped two bamboo canes together and put them along the top here and secured them in. I just tied them in with trusty baling twine and and then I've draped uh, this huge piece of netting over the top of it. Now this is actually scaffolding netting uh, so it's scaffold debris netting to uh, keep work sites safe. It's cheap as chips and you can get it in really wide widths up to three meters wide and as almost any length you want. So this is actually left over from uh, when we were protecting the birds during lockdown. But I'm gonna buy more of it because it's such a useful thing to have around. It'll still let, let the air through, it'll let the rain through, some lights can go through it, but the butterflies can't and that's just got to help. Uh, so that's that's how I fixed it. I've just draped it over the top and then secured it every now and then. There are holes. It, there are holes here, um, and so I've threaded the I've threaded the baling twine up through the holes and secured it at each point where the cane meets the hoop. So that holds it on at the top. And then obviously at the end it needed securing so I've just gathered it all together, used pegs, um, washing pins um, to hold those together so that each end is secure and then at the sides I'm going to use these lengths of wood down the sides along along, and at the moment it's underneath the netting but it will be on top of the netting to uh, secure it at each side and then I can just lift the wood off whenever I want to get in and attend to the plants or weed the ground. Now brassicas like to be really really firmed in and they can also be planted a little bit deeper than their original level so I'm planting them a bit deeper and as I fill in the hole I'm really really firming the soil in around them. This stops them rocking in the wind and uh, they just they really do prefer it. I'm also going to take out any bits of weed roots that I see as I go. They're supposed to all be out of here but obviously I've missed a few bits. Now these these are kale cavolo de Nero um, which I think I've told you before I, I'm not a huge fan of it. My sister loves it so it's nice to be able to give her some. Uh, but one of my main reasons for growing it is that the chickens absolutely adore it and later in the year uh, if we get another lockdown uh, which was enforced by government this year which meant we had to keep all of our birds inside so they don't get as much ch well they don't get any chance to forage because they have to be kept inside at least I can provide them with uh, with green veg that's fresh and it's organic and I know it's been covered because I'm going to keep this cover on the entire time 
So I know it's been covered, uh, so there's been no chance of wild bird poop getting on it, which means it's safe for the birds to eat during the uh, very late autumn and early winter. So that's the first one in. them about a trowel's length apart which is probably a bit closer than uh, textbooks recommend but I've had fairly good results with them last year at that distance uh, so that's what I'm going to do again this year and I sowed these seeds uh, two per module thinking that I would thin them but actually last year when I grew two per module and popped them in the ground, they just grew together and they were absolutely fine. And uh, and I ended up with double the double the crop per per spacing. So that's what I'm going to do again. I might have planted that one a little bit too far over, and it might be a tight squeeze to get a cabbage in the other side of it. But we'll see. Just breaking up some of this these clumps of soil. I'm mixing them with the with the well rotted wood chippings that I put in here. Oh, where are we? Two or three or four days ago. Not very long ago. Only a few days. And and the ground is lovely because we had that massive rainstorm uh, the day before yesterday, and so the ground is moist and feeling very nice. It's. I will water these um, once I've done them all because watering them just makes sure that there are no little air pockets around the roots which will just kill the roots off and that's no, no good going to all that trouble and then killing the roots off because you want, we want healthy little plants. Now each, each plant I leave in a, in a slight dip. I leave the soil a bit higher around it so that when I water, the water doesn't run away. The water actually stays almost pulled or soaks into the ground around it. Um, so it's like having a mini or even a micro swale around each each plant. So there I go, <laughs> big white chatting to me. There we go, the, uh, the Cavallo de Nero kale is now in, in the centre of this bed. There's, a, there's nine, uh, nine little points where I've planted uh, two plants at each, at each station and I may thin them as they go but last year where there were two plants they were absolutely fine, they just grew really strong and healthily together and um, kind of gave me a double head of of uh, kale so that, that would almost seem worth doing again no the ones that are left over are not going to waste they are going to get planted elsewhere in the garden um, and they will probably go into some space in the chicken field 
uh, with some netting around them and then early autumn uh, the chickens will be allowed to get at them or I'll just carry on feeding them bit by bit uh, from there but uh, no none of the plants are going to go to waste. Well the next thing I'm going to do is get in the savoy cabbages they're going to go in a row each side of the kale because we love savoy cabbages or I should rephrase that I love savoy cabbages uh, and any that I don't get to eat well guess what the chickens will be having them. If you're enjoying my vlogs please hit the little thumbs up button leave a comment below share it on social media and of course if you haven't already done so please subscribe. Mm -hmm.